once you get clear on where you're at, which is number one, like you have to be very clear on where you're at today in order to figure out what it is that you need to change. So step two is to get clear on where you're going. So think about what your goals are for next year, both personally and professionally. A lot of times we just think of our professional you know, goals when we're talking about business planning, but we have to think about what our personal goals are too. Um, what is your current fourth quarter goal? Who has thought about how much money or deals they wanna do from now until December 24th? And I say the 24th because awesome, right? But a lot of people don't, they have no idea. So we have to figure out what our fourth quarter goal is because that is gonna be our income in January, February, March when we blew it all in December because we went Christmas shopping and the parties and everything else. So what are you gonna do from now until the end of the year? What steps are you going to take every single day? Um, how many families do you wanna help? How much income do you wanna make? Are you reactive in your day or proactive in your day? And if you're reactive, what has to change, right? What has to change in order for you to be proactive? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that afterwards. Um, how many contacts are you going to commit to? Now, there, I know that there's people that don't wanna prospect, right? So a contact could be a past client. It could be a sphere of influence. It could be somebody that you met at a networking meeting. But one of the biggest things we have to remember is this is a business, right? We are the CEO of our business. Only way we make money is if we close a deal. So when we're talking to people, we have to be very intentional about the fact that we're having a conversation with them because we wanna know if they know of anybody that might be looking to buy or sell. It's not just like, let me go out, shoot the shit, have a couple drinks and like that's a contact. No, we have to be intentional. And we have to have a specific time in our day as to when we're going to do that, and it really has to be in the morning. So start to think about what sources of business you will go after, where your business is coming from, what your morning routine looks like, and what your night routine looks like, because both of them are equally um, important. So when we look at the fourth quarter business plan, and everybody should have a business plan here, it's a 15 month plan. It's gonna start with the fourth quarter. So this is what I want you guys to work on when you're doing your plan is how many deals do I wanna close in October, November, and December, right? What days, look at your calendar. What days are you gonna take off? Thursday, you know, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, what days are you taking off? Um, sometimes we think we work 24 seven, but we really don't. <laughs> so start to look at your schedule and really take days off and stick to it. Um, and then I want you to look at your morning routine, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a minute. But the morning routine, especially when I listen to like very successful people on YouTube, I, I listen to that a lot. They all have a morning routine, right? They all have a morning routine. So what is your morning routine? Um, how many new contacts you plan on making each day? New, like it doesn't have to be a cold lead, but a warm lead. Um, how many existing contacts are you gonna make each day? And one of the things I was in a coaching call, because I'm in coaching myself, um, is we talked about touch points versus trust points, right? There's gonna be certain times in a deal where it's a touch point and there's gonna be certain times in a deal when you're reaching out to people that it's a trust point, right? So how many of us, after a deal closes, you know, you hand them the keys, calls them three weeks, four weeks later after they're all completely unpacked, just to check in and see how they're doing, right? That is one of the biggest opportunities we have because one of the things, and there's a book called um, Never Lose a Customer Again, one of the things that we forget is that when we're handing them the keys, right, we're like, oh, man, that thing's over. It is done. I got my check. See ya, bye. <laughs> like, no. Anyways, but guess what that is for them? Their beginning. That's their new beginning. So 
what if we touched them four weeks into the, them living in their new house, right? Even if it went south. Do you know how many refis I'm doing right now for people that are like, ah! on the purchase, and now they're calling me to refi their home? So many times we think, oh, shit, I blew that one up. I'm never going to, you know? But it's not true. It's just people are in heightened emotions in the middle of these transactions. Doesn't mean that it's personally against you. Doesn't mean anything. So we need to start calling people. In fact, I called our mutual client, and that one, you know, and I was, it was actually a rescue that I did for her. She was so thankful. She loved us. She wants to take us to dinner. And it was like a month and a half after the deal, right? So I want you guys to start to think about in your plan, when can you touch your past clients? Because I know for me, I never call them, which is so stupid. So I need to start. That's one person that we can add to our contact list, right?